fire to tie the game. No. Milakina tried to save it. White to tie it. No. And the Bulls Let's go home. Beat. Robs it up. Dungeon will fire. Dallas Mavericks are an absolute mess. Let's say what it is. The wild, wild west for a reason. Take a look at the western standings and who is on the outside looking in. The Dallas Mavericks currently sitting at 11th and not even in the play-in tournament. It's hard to see a pathway of getting the kind of players around Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving uh, that would make this team a contender again anytime in the near future. The Mavericks over the last few seasons have gone through a lot of different situations. They've had their ups and they've had their downs in the postseason. Ever since the day the Dallas Mavericks drafted Luka Doncic, a slowly ticking time bomb has been counting down for the front office. Once you have a generational talent like Luka Doncic playing for your franchise, there's going to be an immense amount of pressure on the front office to build a coherent team around him. The pressure to win a championship is real in Dallas. For a brief moment, it looked like the Mavericks were taking steps in the right direction. But but this season has felt like a step backwards from where the Mavericks have came from. So it really begs the question, what really happened to the Dallas Mavericks? What could have caused the team to go from making the conference finals to not even making the playoffs? On June 21st, 2018, the Dallas Mavericks drafted Luka Doncic from overseas. He was the third overall pick by the Atlanta Hawks, but he was then traded to the Dallas Mavericks in exchange for the draft rights to Trey Young and a protected future first round pick in 2019. So long story short, the Hawks sold the bag. Anyways, the Mavericks didn't really have an eventful season this year. The Mavericks finished with a record of 33 and 49, putting them as the 14th seed in the West. Luka Doncic, who was only 19, averaged 21 points, 8 boards, and 6 assists a game. He also won Rookie of the Year. Harrison Barnes averaged about 18 points a game. Other key pieces for Dallas down the road were developing. Guys like Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney-Smith, Tim Hardaway Jr., and Dwight Powell were all young and improving at the time. But what really makes this season so special for the Mavericks was the collision of two players. This was the only season that Dirk Nowitzki and Luka Doncic got to play along together. This season really marks the point of passing the torch down from Dirk to Luka, and we'll see what Luka can do with that torch. The 2019-20 season was a much improved season for Dallas. The Mavs finished with a 43-32 record, a quite hefty improvement from last year's record of 33-49. Prior to this season, the Mavericks signed big men Kristaps Porzingis as a free agent. Hopefully, this would be the perfect complementary piece to Luka Doncic, the piece that would help them make a serious playoff run. Speaking of Luka Doncic, he had an incredible sophomore season. He averaged 29-9-9 this year, along with making his very first All-Star appearance. Kristaps Porzingis also had a solid season, averaging 20 and 10. Another notable player this season was Tim Hardaway Jr., who averaged almost 16 points a game. The Mavs were the number 7 seed in the playoffs this year, playing against the two-seeded Clippers. This season didn't go that great for the Mavericks, though. They lost in six games. Porzingis was dealing with a lot of small injuries at the time, so he only played three of six games. However, Luka Doncic had a really good playoff performance for his first year on the big stage and second year in the league. He averaged 31, 10, and nine in this series and had two 40 point games. In game four, he had a game winner in overtime to seal the game 135 to 133. He also had an incredible stat line of 43 points, 17 rebounds, and 13 assists. The Mavs didn't have all the pressure in the world to win the finals this year, thankfully. Luka and the team were still young and developing and the team hadn't made the playoffs in three years prior to this, but it wouldn't be like this forever. The 2020 and 21 season for Dallas was also another improved season. They finished with a record of 42 and 30. Prior to the season, the Mavs traded away Seth Curry to Philly for Tyler Bay and Josh Richardson. Richardson would prove to be a decent role player around Luka. Both Luka Doncic and Kristaps Porzingis also had similar seasons. Doncic averaged about 28, 8, and 8 with an all-star appearance, and Kristaps Porzingis averaged 20 and 9. Tim Hardaway Jr. also averaged a solid 16.6 points 
points a game. Anyways, a 42-30 record got the Mavs the 5 seed in the West. They were matched up against a familiar opponent, the Los Angeles Clippers, who were the 4 seed this year. The series came down to the wire. It was looking promising for Dallas when they took an early 2-0 lead on the road in the series. Then the Clippers reclaimed their ground, winning 2 straight games. Eventually, the Clippers won the series in 7 games, but only after winning 2 straight games after Dallas took Game 5. Despite Luka averaging 35 points, 8 boards, and 10 assists, the Mavericks still couldn't pull off a series win. Kawhi Leonard and the Clippers were just too much for a young Mavericks squad. Now, the Mavericks were starting to get a little taste of what pressure to win in the postseason feels like. Last year, no one really expected the Mavericks to go far. This year was similar to last year, with a little added pressure. Next season, the expectations were going to be a lot higher. The Dallas Mavericks were continuing to improve season by season. This year, the Mavs finished with a 52-30 record. Luka was just being Luka this year. He averaged a light 28-9-9. Someone that made big steps forward this year was Jalen Brunson. He started the majority of games this year, opposed to coming off the bench last year. He bumped up his points per game from 12 to 16 this year. Dorian Finney-Smith also averaged a solid 11 points. During the trade deadline this year, the Mavs made some moves. Kristaps Porzingis proved that he is not the solution for winning in the playoffs. He was also a very injury-prone player, so it only made sense that the Mavs shipped him off to Washington for Davis Bertans and Spencer Dinwiddie. The Mavs this year were the four seed. They played against the Utah Jazz in the first round. Despite Luka not playing in the first three games of this series, the Mavs won in six games. Next, Dallas had to play against the number one seed, Phoenix Suns. This wasn't going to be a walk in the park for the Mavs. It started with the Suns taking an early 2-0 lead at home. The Mavs responded to them with their own two straight home victories, tying up the series 2-2. Two to two. The series was eventually tied up 3-3 three to three until this happened. And Doncic three, good, hit his first three. 27 point lead, down goes Johnson three, Luka oh, no. oh no, they're shredding him. And the other way, rockets his way down, hits his third. The Mavs took a dump on the Suns. It wasn't even funny. Luka Doncic, Jalen Brunson, and Spencer Dinwiddie combined for 89 points. Luka with 35, Brunson with 24, and Dinwiddie coming off the bench had 30 points. The Mavericks stepped up to the plate this game, and the Suns clearly didn't. I think it's safe to say that the Suns know how to blow a 2-0 lead. Now it was off to Golden State against the three-seeded Warriors. Needless to say, this series didn't go well for Dallas. They lost in five games to Golden State, even making it this far for Dallas was an achievement. They took down the reigning Western Conference champions in their own arena. The expectations were going to be huge for next season. The 2022-23 season for the Mavericks feels anticlimactic in a way. The Mavericks finished with an underwhelming 38-44 record. A lot happened during this season. It started off with the offseason, where the Mavericks traded a lot of low-level role players in return for Christian Wood from the Rockets. This showed that the Mavericks were trying to get a suitable big man to pair up with Luka Doncic. Luka Doncic bumped up his scoring this year, averaging 32-8-8. During the middle of the season, the Mavs figured they were going to finish as a mediocre team if they they didn't make a move, so they took a chance on Kyrie Irving. They traded Spencer Dinwiddie and Dorian Finney-Smith to the Brooklyn Nets for Kyrie Irving and Markeith Morris. This was the Mavericks' chance to pair Luka up with a legitimate superstar in Kyrie Irving. They weren't going to waste this chance. And as you guys are all aware of, this idea went terribly. Kind of like how the majority of random assemblies of superstars end up. From February 6th, the day the Mavericks drafted Kyrie, to the end of the regular season, the Mavs had a record of 9-16. and Not what they needed in the home stretch of the season. It's kind of weird how the Dallas Mavericks, over the last few years, went from a developing and improving team to being a first round exit team to making the conference finals to now all of a sudden not even making the playoffs. It really doesn't make a lot of sense. But lucky for you, you're watching an Eddie Buckets video, so you know we're going to make it make sense. The lack of success in Dallas this year is a combination of a lot of different problems this team has. Some of these problems just recently popped up because of the Kyrie Irving trade. 
but other problems the Mavericks have had for a while. The strengths of this team have masked them until recent. So let's start off with the obvious, Kyrie Irving. The trade for Kyrie Irving really messed up a lot of things for this team. First off, the Mavericks had to give up a lot of depth to attain Irving. The Mavericks already didn't have a lot of depth to start with. They had to give up key role players in Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie. These guys were giving the Mavericks a lot of offensive support around Luka and these guys are replacing their spots around Luka and are nowhere near as good as these guys were. Speaking of depth and losing players, another crucial player the Mavericks lost in free agency last year is Jalen Brunson. Just imagine if the Dallas Mavericks were able to keep Brunson and Doncic together, guaranteed this team wouldn't have an issue of making the playoffs. Jalen Brunson this year on the Knicks bumped up his scoring from 16 to 24 points a game. Imagine the offensive firepower the Mavs would have had with both of them. It kind of sucks because the Mavericks just let Jalen Brunson walk. Back to Kyrie, this duo of Kyrie Irving and Luka Doncic was kind of screwed to begin with. You can't tell me you were going to expect a duo of two ball dominant point guards with virtually no one else around them to actually work. The Kyrie Irving trade messed up the structure of this team. This team is really top heavy. There's a huge drop after Luka and Kyrie with skill. To be fair with the front office of Dallas however, I understand what they were trying to do. If they were to keep the same team before the Kyrie trade, they probably wouldn't have made the playoffs best case scenario they would be playing in the play-in tournament the Kyrie Irving trade was a risk the Mavericks took to give them a shot at being contenders with two superstars but it never happened the next problem that the Dallas Mavericks have been dealing with is not having a quality and reliable big man around Luka Doncic this has been a problem ever since Luka Doncic was drafted to really assemble a complete and coherent team around Luka to truly contend for a championship the piece they always were looking for was a solid big Man. At first they tried things with Chris Depp's Porzingis, but he was too injury prone and didn't quite get things done for the Mavs. Dwight Powell has not been it, neither has Maxi Kleber. The Mavs tried to get Christian Wood over last offseason to solve this problem. I think the coaching staff should start him consistently and give him more minutes, and he could have a shot at being that solid big man the Mavs are looking for. Without a solid big man, your team can struggle to run basic plays like pick and rolls, but more importantly, your defense and rebounding suffers. Sounds like the Mavericks problems, right? Don't believe me? Well, listen closely. The Mavericks in 2022 and 23 finished with the 24th best defensive rating in the league of 30 teams, putting them in the bottom 80%. They're also 20th of 30 in opponent effective field goal percentage. The Mavs are 10th of 30 in opponent field goal percentage from 0 to 3 feet from the basket. In terms of rebounding, the Mavericks are dead last, 30th of 30 in offensive rebound percentage and 22nd of 30 in defensive rebound percentage. The Mavs are also dead last in rebounds a game, averaging 38.8 boards a game. They're the only team to average less than 40 boards a game. These problems all sound like big men issues not even just the big men the perimeter defense from Dallas isn't great either the one thing this team has going for themselves though is offense I mean it's pretty easy to understand I think your offense is gonna be pretty good with Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving on your squad the Mavs are sixth in offensive rating and fifth in effective field goal percentage but unfortunately for the Mavs your elite offense can't make up for your team's terrible defense atrocious rebounding lack of depth and poor assembled team. If I were Luka Doncic in this situation, I would be pretty worried about the future of the Dallas Mavericks. The Mavericks have proved over the last half a decade that they can't construct a championship team around Luka Doncic to save their lives. The story of Dallas has really been a one-man show with Luka. He's in his prime right now, and it looks like the Mavs are wasting it away with a mediocre supporting cast around him. Doncic signed a $207 million deal last year through the 2026 and 27 season, but realistically, Dallas has about a year and a half gap to please Luka enough for him to stay. The Mavs have the rest of this season, the offseason, and next season to convince Luka Doncic to stay. This is a lot of pressure the franchise is put under to create a contending team. If the Mavericks can't construct a roster that gives Luka Doncic a chance to win a championship, Doncic may start to consider other teams. I'm not saying he's going to force a trade right after next season, but if Luka Doncic wants to win championships in his career and the Mavericks remain this mediocre team they are right now, Doncic may want to look at other franchises. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. 
Don't forget to go bet over with BetUS. And if you want to see more videos like these, be sure to like and subscribe.